Good morning. Good morning. Come stand with us and sing, Come Thou Fountain of Every Blessing. Contact update forms are available in the Welcome Center, again, back there on the table. Now, please check your bulletin for um, more details on these and other upcoming events. Now, in the early days of Christianity, Christians were often persecuted and they had to meet in secret. Once they were there, they would greet each other because they were so happy to be together in a safe place. We continue that tradition today. The peace of Christ can come in the form of a hug, a handshake, a high five, or a wave across the room. And if you haven't already done so, this is a good time to write any prayer requests in the book, again, back there on the welcome table. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Go love on somebody. 
All right, we're going to go ahead into the call of worship. It's in your bulletin. It's also on the slides. I'll read the light print, and if you'll read with me in the bold. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Our souls thirst for God in a dry and weary land. We seek God's power and glory in the sanctuary. Listen carefully to God and eat what is good. Delight yourselves in the rich food God provides. Here our souls are satisfied as with a rich feast. Together our mouths praise God with joyful lips. God offers us steadfast love and a covenant relationship. We are called to be faithful witnesses and leaders. We have come to meditate on the living God. We seek inspiration and empowerment to do what God asks. Amen. Let's stand again and sing. Yes, Lord. 
tell you, if you were not here yesterday, you missed one of the most exciting, joyful funerals I've ever been to, attended, contributed to. And if you missed it, go on YouTube and see it on our page. I know that many people, uh, <laughs> many of us have been to lots of funerals, huh, Rachel? But this was very unique. And I'm sure that Richard just grinned himself to pieces as we sang and did a conga line and a lot of other things. In our prayer and praise book tonight, we need to have prayers today, this morning, sometime. We need to have prayers for Irene Stanley, who used to be a part of this church, her son Sydney. Irene is back in the hospital. She's had pneumonia, but she's getting better. Also, Patsy Lawrence is in the hospital. She'll be going home tomorrow. Continue to keep Joanna in her prayers. She's recovering from her heart procedures this week. Overdid a little bit yesterday. Also, Patty Paul's brother James is having some breathing problems in the hospital in West Virginia, and she'd appreciate prayers for him. What other prayer requests or praises do you have this morning, Pat? Uh, praises for a lovely home service yesterday for Richard, and prayers for brother. Praises for the service yesterday and prayers for Pat's brother. Anyone else? Rhonda? Uh, thank you for your prayers last week. Uh, in my travels to Charlotte. Um, I gotta tell you, I had church, but they were, I never opened my mouth. They are an amazing group of people, and uh, I was very blessed by them and the opportunity to be there and by your prayers. And uh, also, you can keep my sister um, in your prayers. Um, some medical stuff going on, and, and it has the potential to be very serious. Praises for her time in Charlotte and since he there last Sunday. I got good reports back on her too, so she's not just tooting her own horn. And also prayers for her sister who could have some serious medical things coming up. Other prayer requests, praises? Yes, Elizabeth? Blessed by our daughters being closer, and one daughter. How can you have a daughter 36 years old? I'm not asking any more questions. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just move right along. We'll just move right along. No. Yeah, prayers for Kathy and her trip this week, and she's amongst lots of wild animals around that area. So, prayers are done. Prayers for Kathy among wild animals. She's not going to a zoo. She's going camping. So prayers for her for that. For Bo, and she takes care of all the wild animals known as cats around their house. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, prayers for my niece and grandnephew who just 
laid their mother to rest uh, last week. My cousin's fiance just passed this morning, and her father's <coughs> grandfather will attend her father tomorrow. There's my brother and all the people in his family that are grieving. Grieving. You know, just remember, folks, that grief isn't over with in three days. Grief isn't over with in two weeks. We need to remember and go back and check on folks and love on them weeks and months to come. Karen? Four years. And like I said to her, you know, one day, one day at a time, one day at a time. Not just drug and addiction, but you know, we don't get in the messes we get in overnight. And most of the time, it, we don't get over them overnight. So be patient with yourself. Let God and loved, loved ones work with you. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we come to you today being thankful for all the ways you've blessed us, for the answers to prayer that we see sitting among us, the answers of prayers that we know we've seen your touch and your love and your guidance. We bring to you all the requests that have been made today. We bring to you those who are hurting and grieving, those that are sick, those that are waiting on diagnoses, we stand with all knowing that you are the perfect one. You are the God that heals, the God that makes us whole, the God that decides how all that happens. I do thank you for our service yesterday, and I thank you that Richard's biological sister was here, and she could see how incredibly loved her brother was and is. Continue to go with us as we try to continue to live the mission and the example that Richard left for us. May we have that smile, may we have that look in our eyes, that we show people that we care. Continue to bless us as we continue in our service today so that we won't block our own blessing, so we'll block somebody else's blessing, but we'll all be open, wide open, for your spirit to fill and flow through us. In your name we pray, amen. minor technical details. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so it's time for the offering, and uh, I want to direct your attention to my left or right uh, for the building ministry. Uh, we are working to raise funds for needed repairs, so keep that in mind uh, as, you, uh, as you plan your giving. Um, you know, the neat thing about this church is that um, we, we do love on each other, and we do take care of each other, and we take care of our community. Uh, so. You know, in order to do that, we have to have funds <laughs> to be able to, to be here. So just ask that you give as you're able, and give as you're led, and uh, if the ushers will please come. Sadness from wherever you've been. Come, broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come, find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your Their 
there's hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed come sit at the table come taste the grace there's rest for the weary a rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face oh wanderer come home you're not too so lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, fall in God's arms, come as you are. There's joy for the morning, oh sinner be still, earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face oh wanderer come home church where we can come as we are, where we can worship together, where we can sorrow together, and where we can heal each other together. Lord, I ask that you bless these offerings uh, as you see fit, that we can further your ministry in this community. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The scripture reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come anyway, buy and eat. Come, buy your drinks, buy wine and milk. Buy without money. Everything's free. Why do you spend your money on junk food? Your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? Listen to me, listen well. Eat only the best. Fill yourself with only the finest. Pay attention, come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I'm making a lasting com covenant commitment with you, the same that I made with David. Sure, solid, enduring love. I set him up as a witness to the nations, made him a prince and leader of the nations, and now I'm doing it to you. You'll summon nations you've never heard of, and nations who have never heard of you will come running to you because of me, your God, because the Holy of Israel has honored you. Seek God while he's here to be found. Pray to him while he's close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God, who is merciful. Come back to our God, who is lavish with forgiveness. I don't think the way you think. 
The way you work isn't the way I work. God's decree. For as the sky soars high above earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work, and the way I think is beyond the way you think. Rachel, your beautiful song almost made me have to change my sermon, which has, <laughs> has happened before. Uh, one Sunday in Charlotte, Tony sang a song that just really touched me about joy because we weren't in a very joyous place. And I quickly looked up the verse, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Throughout the sermon, it went on to something else. But I wrote that line down Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. You'll be hearing that again sometime. Stay tuned. <laughs> this has been one of the most challenging weeks of my life in a long time. I thank many of you who've picked up the pieces and the time, especially Kelly and Sandra who've kept things going here when I had to be away when Joanna had a heart attack and was in the hospital. And um, she's slowly recovering, over did a little bit yesterday. But it's good to know that. Life and work and ministry goes on. It's not dependent on just one person. And I surely appreciate all your prayers this week, as, as Joanna and Ruby. I love this scripture because of the joy in it. Did you hear that joy? And somehow or other in the Message Bible, it just has a little more pep to it than sometimes I've read this in other translations. I have to set, put in the setting a little bit for you. Because in some ways, this is a bad scripture during Lent. When we're supposed to have given up certain things, it's talking about cotton candy, you know, and, and when it's, we're supposed to be thinking about our offerings for Easter Sunday, we bring that in. It says, spend your money, get good stuff. But when the prophet was writing this, prophet Isaiah, when God was giving him this message, he was giving it to the nation of Israel who had been in exile. For many, many years, they'd been jerked out of their country, taken to a faraway country by a group that was dominating them. They had to leave their homes and everything they had. And they'd been sort of making a new life. They had been working on figuring out how to be in exile and still go on. And they had learned good things. They had learned how to speak the language. They learned how to figure out what to buy and how to buy it, although it's very expensive. And unfortunately, in that process, too, they have begun to fall into the worship of that nation. I've often, when I've taught this in other situations, I've tried to have us imagine if a bus pulled up out front right now, just as we are, we were all loaded onto a bus, taken over to the airport, and flown to Serbia. You say, I don't even know where that is. Flown to Serbia, take it off the plane with just what you have right now, and told you're going to be there for the next 40 years. I can't imagine what it was like for these folks. And many of them had given up hope. And that's where this part of Isaiah kicks in to give them hope that there are better days to come and that God hasn't forgotten them. You know, let's take Serbia and let's take it a country where the only religion allowed was atheism. And we couldn't take our Bibles with us, if you brought it with you this morning. We couldn't take any of that. And we had to so, sort of go figure out how to not only fit in, but to survive. And here comes Isaiah with this message that all is not lost, that there is hope, that good things are still coming, that they're going to have to go get them. I've told the story before, and you've probably heard it before, about the people who came over in the early days of migration to the United States on liners from Europe. And they weren't all luxury liners, at least not after you got first past the first level. This young man had worked and saved and worked and saved and sent money for his parents to come. Sent them the best ticket he could buy. They didn't know that. They got on the 
the uh, ship. They went where most of the other people were going. They had a little bit of cheese, a little bit of bread that tried to sustain them the whole trip. They got off the ship. They were emaciated. They were weak. And the son says, what is wrong? I bought you the best ticket. You had free meals every day. But they hadn't known to take advantage of it. Isaiah is saying here, come on, come on. Three times says, come on. Seriously, get with it. There's such good things for you. Don't be wasting your money, it says. Don't be wasting your time on junk food. Now, we're not going to get into what junk food because I don't want to step on my own toes, okay? But Easter does have white chocolate m ms out again, okay? But they're not talking about the food. Talk about how we spend our time and our effort and our energy. How much time do we waste on junk that doesn't matter? Stuff that not only five years from now, but stuff two weeks from now won't matter. And Isaiah is saying, go for the good things. Go for the good things. He says, I've made a promise, a covenant with you. Go for the good things. And then he says, not only are things going to be better for you, but people are going to come from all over the world to you. Now think about that when the nation of Israel was formed in 1948. And Jewish people from all over the world were clamoring to get into Israel, to be in the nation of their faith. The nation of their faith. And I believe that applies to MCC. How many of you came from Roanoke, Virginia? You have born and been here all your life. A couple. How many of you came from somewhere in the state of Virginia? How many of you came from somewhere not in the state of Virginia? Yeah, we got this West Virginia group over here. We're not going to look at them. But for whatever reason, you've been brought here, and for other reasons, you've been brought to this church. You may have come to this church because you wanted to be like people with people like yourself. You say, well, what do you mean by that? First of all, Bible-believing Christian people. <clears throat> also LGBTQ people. Also people who like our form of worship. I believe, folks, that this church is on the tiptoe, on the edge, on the brink of a revival of people coming to worship with us. And if you don't believe that, it's never going to happen. If you're sitting back going, yeah, really? You think so? But people are going to come through those doors who aren't all just like us. There are going to be people coming through those doors who are not LGBTQ, hallelujah. There are going to be people coming through those doors who may not quite believe exactly like many of us believe. There used to be a lady that sat back in the row right behind where Mo's sitting. She came with her son, her adult son, and she told me early on she was Buddhist. And she just came because she wanted to bring her son. And you know what I said? Come on. Come on. Come on. Nobody checks your card at the door. I talked to some people yesterday at the funeral who were not part of our church. And she came up and she said, can my friends and I come to your church? I said, sure, anytime, come on. She says, well, you know, we're not. I said, come on. Well, I'm not sure what I believe about. And I said, come on. Come in the door, they'll hear, see, and feel what's here for them. But we've got to be ready for that. We've got to be ready for that. We have to summon up that faith in ourselves, in our God, in our ministry. Isaiah says, you'll summon nations you've never heard of. There are going to be people coming here and don't do like I once did in California. There was a man that came. We met in this ranch house in the living room area. He'd slip in and sit by the back door with his big old black, I'm sure, King James Bible and his black suit, his white shirt, his skinny little black tie. I just knew he was a spy. If I'd been in Virginia, I think he'd come from Thomas Rose. <laughs> and he would come and he would sit there, and before I even almost finished the sermon, he'd be gone. And he'd be taking notes. That's even worse. He's going back to documentation of what she said. Finally, one Sunday, I caught it. I finished early, and I needed a shortcut around. And I said, I'm glad you're coming, but who are you? He wasn't.
was a minister. He was a minister at a conservative church. But he also was a man that was looking for a different kind of church and a different kind of people. He said, I have to slip in after dark and I have to leave quickly because nobody from my church can dare see me pulling out of this parking lot. He came for a while and then I never heard from him. But I know that for those weeks that he was there, he heard a message of the inclusive love of God. He heard the message that he was welcome. He heard the message that there was a seat for him. Prophet Isaiah goes on and reminds him of God's abundant forgiveness. Because, you know, the Jewish nation was created to be the apple of God's eye, like David. The Jewish nation was the chosen people, the people that God had picked out special to give God's message, God's law, God's love. And they just enveloped that and worshipped that and were happy in it. No, not at all. Like us, they messed up over and over and over and over. And every time they screwed up, when they turned back to God, God did not meet them with a club. God did not meet them with being in restriction. God met them with open arms and forgiveness. And Isaiah is reminding them of that because they know how far they've wandered in these years. And I believe that we need to be reminded of that, that no matter where we've been, no matter how long it's been since we even said the word G-O-D, God hasn't gone anywhere. God's been right there, right there with open arms, with open heart. Come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. Forgiveness is a hard thing sometimes, huh? Mm -hmm. And lavish forgiveness is really stretching it. Really stretching. Because lavish forgiveness means I'm going to love up on you, and I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to give you the second, third, fourth, fifth chance. And I'm going to, deep in my heart, forgive you. Now, God's a lot better at that than I am. But God is excellent at that. And then he gets to the real crux of the matter here at the end when he says, God says, I don't think the way you think, the way you work, isn't the way I work. Amen. I often joke about if I got to be God for a day, what I'd do. First thing I'd do is I'd put baby toes on a swivel. So you don't crack them so easily. That's kind of silly. God's ways, God's thoughts are so far beyond ours. So radically different. And in this passage when, when it says God's thoughts, it actually means God's plans. God's understanding. I don't understand why things have happened the last two or three weeks like they've happened. I don't understand why Richard wasn't standing right here, smiling to beat the band and singing. He and Jeff and Michael just rocking this back row here, you know? I don't understand. But I learned a long time ago, I don't have to understand. I said we have to trust and keep putting one foot in front of the other, one heartbeat next to the next. I don't understand how I ended up back in this pulpit. I don't understand how I got here the first time. But my job is not to understand. My job is to obey. My job is not to understand. My job is to take step after step after step. And to realize that God knows a whole lot more, a whole lot more than I know. Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful for that? You know when we say only God knows, that's a really big serious thing. And it's a blessing. And it's a blessing. So get ready, folks. Not only are people going to be coming in those doors different than we, some like us, some not like us, there are going to be people coming in this door that may never have even been involved in church before. Someone asked me one day, what's a doxology? You know? Somebody may come up to you and say, what, what do you come up here and do with this juice and wafer? I mean, they hear us explain it, but they may not get it. 
I had a child in California once ask me if Easter was always on Sunday. <laughs> but you know what? We're here not only to help and to teach, but to show people. Show people what God's lavish love is. To show people what God's lavish forgiveness is. And to show them that God will take each one of us where we are, just as we are, and take us to where God wants us to be. But again, just in closing, that's only going to happen if we are ready. If we are ready. If we have enough love and openness and forgiveness in our hearts, that we welcome those who come. That we have enough love and forgiveness and hope in our hearts that we have a message for them when they come. Not just the message that comes from up here. People get messages when they walk in that door. If you're griping and groaning out front about how awful church is, don't think anybody's going to want to come in here. Can you imagine if you went to your favorite restaurant that you really didn't like and you stood by the door while you're waiting and said, you know, the food's awful here. Service is terrible here. Their attitude, how many people are going to say, wow, let me run into that restaurant? The message that we give by the songs we say, expressions on our face, will be what will bring people not just to this church, but more importantly, to God. Are we ready?